Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to the Soap Thing Project, and thank you for joining me today. I'm still in the middle of a raging sinus infection, as I stated at the end of my last video. It's causing me to have splitting headaches and pain all across the right side of my face. But the show must go on, so I figured why not do something that's a bit more comforting, <laughs> let's put it that way. I'm going to use Castle Forbes. And this one is the cedarwood and sandalwood essential oil variety of the soap. This is $3.75 for a sample at Maggard. And it looks like I forgot my iPhone cheat sheet. So I will go ahead and put the list of ingredients across the bottom of the screen for you. But I am no stranger to Castle Forbes shaving soaps. I have three full-size tubs of their stuff. Their full-size tubs go for about $43, but you get 6.7 ounces of soap, and the soap is extremely fuel-efficient. A little bit goes a long way, so you're definitely getting your money's worth in terms of uh, quantity of soap and as well as quality, because as far as non-artisan soap bases go, it's one of the best. It's one of the very best non-artisan soap bases I've ever seen. It really is crazy stuff. It's a non-tallow based soap, scented with cedarwood and, and sandalwood, excuse me, essential oils obviously. So we are going to do a shave with that. The aftershave is going to be Aramis aftershave balm. Because I am in the mood for something like this. And this is kind of a leathery sheepra sort of scent. This dates back to the mid 1960s and so it's a fairly old kind of old timey almost fuddy duddy sort of scent in my personal opinion but I kind of like it just for its quirkiness in that regard now I want to thank my beautiful wife Christina for sending me a care package that had a bunch of my gear from my shaved end back in the states packed inside of it one of the things she sent me was this right here this is the Razor Rock Lupo 58 Razor Rock razors are made in Canada. This one is 316 stainless steel, 0.58 millimeter blade gap, slightly positive exposure, I'm fairly certain. This razor was supposed to be their version of the Lupo that shaves more like the aluminum Lupo. I can't speak to how exactly it shaves compared to the aluminum Lupo because I've never owned the aluminum one, but I can tell you I have the Lupo 72, which in my opinion is almost perfection. And this has the same amount of efficiency as the Lupo 72, but a bit less blade feel. So it's kind of a dumb reach, autopilot, just kind of grab and go sort of razor. But we're going to use this for a while. I've been missing my Lupo razors, so thank you, Christina, for sending that over to me. And let's take the Maxpedition blade bag and shake it up. Because whenever we do a sample video, we always pick a random blade. So I'm going to look straight up at the ceiling and reach in there, kind of, kind of dig around towards the bottom. And I am going to pick this one, if I can get my hand out of the bag. And it looks like we have a Gillette Menorah. I think I got a Gillette Menorah uh, a couple shaves ago. And these are one of my favorite blades, if I can get it to focus. If for no other reason, then they're just really consistent. They're not the sharpest or the smoothest blade necessarily, but they're a very forgiving blade. Generally speaking, knock on wood, I don't tend to have issues with getting nicks and cuts with these. They're really consistent that way. So, into the Lupo 58 it goes. Let's just take it apart, put the blade in. There we go. So I'm fairly 
confident about where this shave is going. So we got the Lupo 58 with a Gillette Menorah blade loaded into it. Something else my wife threw in the box was a Langley City Shave Bowl. And for those of you who have been a part of the project for a while, you'll know that the blue and gold version of the Langley City Shave Bowl has been a staple of the Soap Thing project for quite a long time. That one's eventually going to go up for sale when I get back to Illinois. But I bought this one right before I got shipped out here to Turkey, and it showed up on my doorstep back in the States uh, about three days after I left. So unfortunately I had to wait for Christina to throw it in a box and send it over to me. So now I've got a Langley City Shave Bowl on the Soap Thing Project again. And in my opinion, these are the absolute best shave bowls that you can possibly get in terms of both form and function. It's got this rubbery kind of grippy surface on the bottom, so you can really like, I'm not sure why you would do that, but you can toss this thing around all you want, and it's not going to slip out of your hands even if you've got soap and water on your hands. It's quite a tall shave bowl, so you don't have to worry about lather kind of being sloshed over the side of the bowl. And it's quite a wide bowl, believe it or not. So you've got plenty of room to make circular back and forth motions. It really is quite an amazing uh, execution of a shave bowl. And it's got ripples that are not overbearing, like the, uh, the ripples at the bottom of the Prairie Shavery Unbreakable Shaving Bowl. That thing creates a lather like crazy, but the, uh, the sort of divots or ripples, so to speak, in the bottom of the bowl are so aggressive that it can actually accumulate soap that makes it kind of hard to wash it out, rinse it out. I have no such issues with this one. The only uh, downside of these bowls is they're quite expensive. And uh, Langley City Shave Shop doesn't make very many of them. They make like five or six at a time, and they sell out right away. And they only make them like two, three, sometimes four times a year. So if you happen to stumble across one that's available on their Etsy shop, be sure to pick one up because you may never see something like this again. Certainly not in this particular color scheme because they're very, very custom pieces of shave gear, so to speak. All right, enough talking about that. Let's move on to the brush. 22 millimeter Maggard G5 synthetic on an Eric Sorrentino black and gold handle. And this handle is just a simple pour of black and gold. There's not really anything too crazy about it. And this, uh, this synthetic knot has quite a bit of backbone. I think that has to do with how it's set in the brush, but it's a good synthetic. The Magger G5 synthetic is, uh, I believe, made in Germany. So fairly good quality on the synthetic brush. Okay, let's get all this together and let's do a shave.
Okay, got a solid two days of growth on the face today. Plenty enough to do a shave. And we've got the Castle Forbes cedar wood and sandal wood lathered into the Langley City Shave Bowl. And the sin strength on it is a perfectly average 3 out of 5 on the sniffo meter. Now, I tried to come up with an explanation for what this stuff smells like, and I couldn't. And then I was watching a video, a much older video, by Chad from CD Shaven. And he did a review of this, and he says that it smells like you just walked into an Amish furniture store. And I thought, that's it. That's exactly what it smells like. It smells like handcrafted, heirloom quality wood furniture. Complete with the, uh, with the treated wood, the kind of... Not polished, but the, the smell of the sealant that you put on it. That's what it smells like. Well, there you go. Got the uh, scent explanation done before we even get started. <laughs> no, we're going to talk about it a little bit more. But we've got the Razor Rock Lupo 58 with a Gillette Menorah blade into it. Let's do a shave with it. Now. I think this is actually fairly well blended. I mean, there's only two essential oil notes the cedar wood and the sandal wood. Castle Forbes prides themselves in that all their soaps are scented with essential oils only. So do keep that in mind. Castle Forbes has an interesting history. I guess the family uh, took a, a castle that was in their family name up in Scotland and fully restored it and turned it into the world's smallest perfumery. So if I read their history right, they've been making fragrances and shaving products since the early 1990s, I think. But this has kind of a little bit of an old-timey woody sort of facet. I get a good amount of cedar. If I had to pick one that sticks out to me a little bit more, it would be maybe this soap is slightly cedar heavy, but I get a fair amount of uh, oh sweeter kind of sandalwood. It's not super dry. It's not sweet like Hawaiian sandalwood. There is a little bit of dryness to this, but for the most part, this sandalwood in this, I think, has just a touch of sweetness. Just look how thick this stuff lathers on. It's like... I don't know how to describe it. It's like freaking... like velvet almost. It's just so rich and creamy and thick and kind of uh, just really rich feeling, I guess is the right word. Uh, okay, across the grain. Yeah, this one is... Uh, about the same efficiency as the uh, Lupo 72, but less blade feely.
the reason I had my wife send me this one is because out of all the Razor Rock razors that I've used on the project, and I'm a Razor Rock fanboy, this one got the least amount of screen time, so. So I'm gonna use it. And I recommend uh, Razor Rock razors even to first time shavers. I get you a Mamba 70 if you've never shaved with a safety razor before. And a lot of people are going to say, well, the, the Merker 34C is cheaper. Well, yes. But for $30 more, you get a stainless steel razor instead of chrome plated zinc. It will last you a lot longer than a Merker 34. And if you decide you don't like wet shaving, well, these retain their value a lot better. Whenever I talk to new people who are just getting into wet shaving, I always tell them, look, if you're serious about this, then uh, spend a little more money than you would have wanted to just right out of the gate. Instead of getting a good safety razor, get a better safety razor. Because first impressions are everything. Instead of getting the cheapest brush you can find, go get an AP Shave Co. That, that is a better brush, in my personal opinion. Doing a few touch ups. You know, get a a good pack of blades or a or a better pack of blades. Don't get the cheapest blades you can possibly find. They might be fine, but spring for a little extra a little extra money and get some Gillette Platinums. Or even these silver blues. Hell, oh, Wizomets. Okay. I think that is, well... This stuff has crazy residual slickness. Primary and residual slickness on this stuff is among the best I've ever seen. It rivals a lot of the best... Uh, artisan stuff. So I can kind of just blade buff all I want. Alright, let's do a rinse. Oh boy. After I turn the camera off, I think I'm just going to go in my bedroom and <laughs> hang out with the lights off. My headache is killing me right now. Okay. Well, I suppose we ought to do the Shave Nation Alum Block. Looks exactly like this. And kind of a deodorant stick looking thing. Ooh. A little bit of stinging feedback, but I think that's probably my fault. From, uh... Hanging out on my neck for a little too long. It's kind of one of the bad habits I have. Hmm, interesting. This thing is shedding its alum. So it's kind of just falling off onto my face. Okay, no stinging feedback on the upper part of my face, but the neck had just a touch. So not horrible. Okay, let's do the aftershave. Okay, time for some Aramis. After shave balm, let's put it on. Now I kind of like this stuff because it's a little uh, toned down on the scent strength and the scent character from the regular Aramis, like the After Shave Splash and the uh, Eau de Toilette, which in my opinion is a is a bit overbearing. 
Not this stuff. Smells great, but not too strong. And it feels absolutely wonderful on the face. I think I put a little too much on, so I'm just gonna, there. Oh, wonderful stuff. Aramis aftershave balm. It's kind of hard to find. I had to find mine on eBay. Okay, my final thoughts on Castle Forbes, Cedarwood and Sandalwood. So I already own a full-size tub of this, so I guess you could say that automatically means it's soap thing approved. Is it my favorite scent in the Castle Forbes lineup? No. Uh, if you want my favorite scent from Castle Forbes, it's going to be 1445, which is a fougere. That is my all-time favorite scent from them, and I have burned through, I burned through one 6.7 ounce tub, and I'm about a third of the way through a second one. So that tells you how much I like it. Castle Forbes is absolutely good to go. If I were going to get out of artisan products, the stuff that would remain in my shaved end would probably be Leah and Castle Forbes. It's that good. It's good stuff. So if you've got room in the budget for it, you might consider picking up some Castle Forbes, or at least go to Maggard and try picking up a sample. That's it. That's the video for today. I want to thank everybody for watching, and until next time, this is Soap Thing telling you, shave like you mean it. Thanks for watching.